neoplasia, if we translate it, is new growth. But then there are examples of new growth in normal physiologic processes as well. For example, developing embryo during intrauterine life is uh, got new growth of variety of cells taking place. Or in tissue repair, there is proliferation taking place and new growth taking place. Or hormonal stimulation in menstruation when new endometrium is laid down. So all these are also examples of newer proliferation or new growth. But these are well controlled proliferation and physiologic processes. While neoplasia means pathological disturbance in the growth. And neoplasm is new growth. Neoplasia is the process of new growth formation, while neoplasm or tumor is defined as a new growth, which is actually formed as a mass of tissue because of abnormal, excessive, uncoordinated, autonomous, and purposeless proliferation of cells. And they continue to follow these characteristics even after the growth stimulus has been removed. So these are basic features of neoplasms that there is abnormal proliferation, it is excessive beyond normal, it is uncoordinated, it is devoid of any growth control or is autonomous and serves no purpose. Now, all these characteristics are features of neoplasms but not in the physiologic growth because they are normal. That's not excessive in physiologic growth and that's well regulated or coordinated and is regulated growth and serves a purpose. So therefore, these features characterize neoplasms and the process of formation of uh, new proliferations of this type or pathologic proliferation of this type is called as neoplasia. Now the branch of science that deals with the study of neoplasms or the tumors is called oncology. Oncos means tumor and logos means study. Now, neoplasms or tumors may be classified into benign and malignant. Benign are innocent tumors and they are slow growing localized tumors, while malignant are rapidly proliferating tumors and they spread through the body. Now, the common term used for malignant tumors is cancer, which means actually crab, because the cancer adheres or sticks to the part where it is arisen from, and it sticks in such a stubborn manner as crab does. So therefore, the term used carcinos or the cancer is derived from Greek term, which means crab. So it's like, um, it's stuck like a crab to the site or the organ where it is arisen from. So there are two basic components of all tumors. That is parenchyma and supportive stromal network. The parenchyma is comprised by the proliferating tumor cells, the actual parenchymal tumor cells. And this determines the nature and evolution of the tumor. The second component called stromal, supportive stromal network or supportive stroma is composed of fibrovascular tissue, which means it has got fibrous tissue and blood vessels in it. And that forms the network, which actually perfuses the tumor cell. So it provides the framework of parenchyma tumor cells to grow because perfusion comes from fibrovascular network. How do we name the tumors or how do we use the nomenclature for tumors? The tumors derive their nomenclature on the basis of parenchymal cells which comprise them. So the benign tumors, the term used is cell of origin followed by OMA. For example, a tumor rising from fibrous tissue will be a fibroma and likewise the one arising from the skeletal muscle we call a rhabdomyoma, smooth muscle we call a neomyoma or rising from nerve fiber will be called neurofibroma and so on. So oma is the suffix 
and prefix is the cell of origin for benign tumors. Now, malignant tumors can be of epithelial origin or of mesenchymal origin. The ones of epithelial origin are called carcinomas, while malignant mesenchymal tumors are called sarcomas, and that's because of their fleshy cross appearance. So, therefore, Malignant tumors or common term for them called cancers may be carcinomas which are of epithelial origin or sarcomas which are of mesenchymal origin. For example, here there is a squamous cell carcinoma arising from the squamous epithelium. So therefore, the term used here is a carcinoma with a prefix of the cell of origin and for a mes mesenchymal malignant tumor, the term used here is a fibrosarcoma for the tumor arising from fibrous tissue. So fibrosarcoma, the post fixes sarcoma in most of the mesenchymal malignant tumors. But then there are some malignant tumors or cancers where it is not possible to determine whether the tumor is of epithelial origin or of mesenchymal origin because the tumor cells are too poorly differentiated or it is not possible to determine the cell of origin. So those are called undifferentiated malignant tumors. They are highly malignant tumors. Now, this is the generalization for nomenclature that for benign tumors, we use the cell of origin followed by OMA and for malignant epithelial tumor, cell of origin, carcinoma, then malignant mesenchymal tumor, cell of origin followed by sarcoma. But then, there are certain exceptions to this generalization. For example, melanoma, the term used is for the malignant epithelial, malignant epithelial tumor arising from nervous cells. Although the term used here is melanoma rather than melanocarcinoma, which is synonymous. So melanoma is a malignant tumor. Likewise, hepatoma is same as hepatocellular carcinoma. And the hepatoma is a malignant tumor of hepatocytes. Lymphoma is a malignant lymphoid malignancy. And likewise, seminoma is a malignant tumor arising from the seminiferous uh, cells. And likewise, leukemia is the term used for malignant tumors of leukocytic series of the cells. So these are exceptions to this generalization where the terms used for malignancy are different uh, than the usual terminologies. So based on this, a histogenetic classification of malignant tumors has been described and that classification is specific for different systems and different organs which we will discuss when we have uh, classes on systemic pathology. But a broad general classification of benign and malignant tumor based on the cell of origin can be categorized as Epithelial tumors as squamous epithelial tumors, squamous papilloma benign and squamous cell carcinoma is malignant. Transitional epithelium, there is transitional cell papilloma and the counterpart, malignant counterpart is transitional cell carcinoma. Urothelial um, tumors called as papilloma or urothelial papilloma as benign and urothelial carcinoma as malignant. Then glandular epithelium from bowel or in the gallbladder is called as adenoma and adenocarcinoma respectively for benign and malignant tumor. Similarly, the mesothelial tumor as benign mesothelioma and malignant mesothelioma and the basal cell tumor is regarded malignant example of a malignant tumor called basal cell carcinoma and the melanocytic tumor called nevus or malignant melanoma or melanocarcinoma also called as melanoma. And hepatocytes uh, give rise to liver cell adenoma is benign tumor and hepatoma or hepatocellular carcinoma is malignant example. Placental tumor benign called as hydrotidiform or and malignant called as choriocarcinoma. Then there are non-epithelial or mesenchymal tumors arising from different mesenchymal tissues with the cell of origin followed by the corresponding term as OMA for benign tumors and sarcomas for malignant tumors. So lipoma and liposarcoma, fibroma from fibrous tissue, benign tumor and fibrosarcoma as malignant fibrous tissue tumor. Embryonic fibrous tissue as myxoma and myxosarcoma as benign and malignant examples. The cartilage tumor correspondingly are called as chondroma and chondrosarcoma. 
bone tumors. There are many, but common example here, benign tumor osteoma and osteosarcoma as malignant example, benign synovioma and synovial sarcoma as benign and malignant counterparts are synovial tumors. Leomyoma and leomyosarcoma as benign and malignant tumors of smooth muscle and skeletal muscle as rhabdomyoma and rhabdomyosarcoma and benign and malignant tumors from skeletal muscle, blood vessels, hemangioma and angiosarcoma or hemangiosarcoma are the terms used for benign and malignant lymph vessel, lymph vessels as lymphangioma and lymphangiosarcoma are the benign and malignant tumor, glomus tumor as glomus uh, from glomus cells as benign tumor and glomangiosarcoma as malignant tumor. Meningium, meninges give rise to meningioma as a common tumor. Invasive meningioma is the malignant counterpart. Hematopoietic uh, cell tumors, leukemias from the leukocytic series of malignant tumors. Uh, and likewise, lymphoid tissue may give rise to pseudolymphoma and malignant lymphoma is malignant example. Nerve sheath tumor as neurilemoma and neurofibroma and malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor use synonymous with neurogenic sarcoma and nerve cell tumor called ganglioneuroma and ganglio and neuroblastoma as example. So this is just a abbreviated list of benign and malignant epithelial and non-epithelial or mesenchymal tumors. Then there are certain examples of mixed tumors as salivary gland tumor called pleomorphic adenoma and malignant mixed salivary tumor as malignant counterpart and tumors from the germ cell layer called as totipotent cells, they give rise to mature teratoma as benign example and immature teratoma and malignant teratoma as malignant counterpart. So this is just a abbreviated classification based on the cell of region, dividing it into benign and malignant tumors. Then we come to the characteristics of tumors. Now, tumors can be categorized based on certain features into benign and malignant. And most important of that is the behavior of the tumor and the morphologic appearance of the tumor. The behavior of the tumor determines the biologic evolution of the tumor, how it behaves in the host. And the morphologic appearance includes the gross microscopic examination. So therefore, those are other features which are important. And besides that, in the behavior, an important role of the spread of the tumor from its local site into adjoining tissues or to distant sites is also a very important feature to distinguish between benign and malignant tumors. So based on the general features or characteristics of tumors, uh, it can be discussed under following headings that includes the rate of growth of these tumor cells, cancer phenotype and the stem cells, clinical and gross features, microscopic features and finally spread of the tumors. So therefore, we will discuss all these features one by one. First, rate of growth of the cell. So, rate of the growth of tumor cells depends upon two main factors. First is rate of cell production and rate of cell loss besides growth fraction. Now, what is this uh, uh, which disturbs the balance towards the proliferation. So therefore, there is a disturbance in the rate of production, growth fraction and rate of cell loss. Normally, the rate of production and rate of cell loss in physiologic uh, examples is counterbalanced in a way that no tumor occurs. Once there is disturbance in this particular uh, feature, then the tumor starts. So that depends upon, first of all, the number of cells which are entering into mitosis. So that means mitotic rate or doubling time of the tumor cells. So therefore, the tumor cells are proliferating more rapidly than the normal physiologic cells, while malignant tumor cells proliferate much more rapidly. So therefore, their doubling time is much more rapid. So they are entering the mitosis rapidly. So one is the mitotic rate or doubling time of the tumor cell. Second is the growth fraction, that is the number of cells remaining in the 
proliferation pool, which means that the cells in tumors continue to remain in the proliferation pool rather than going into the resting phase. So therefore, they do not go out into G0. Instead, they continue in the replicating cycle. And that's what comprises the growth fraction. And third is apoptosis or rate of cell loss. That is the rate of loss of tumor cells by cell shedding is decreased. That the tumor cells are not lost counterbalancing to the mitotic rate. So therefore, they continue to remain um, immortal in the tumors, as we will discuss subsequently, how the tumor cells escape cell death or apoptosis. So therefore, this is one feature of the tumors, that their rate of growth is more rapid in tumors in general, but much more in malignant tumors. And that is based on rate of cell production the growth fraction of the cells which remain in the replicating pool and by decreasing the rate of cell loss. Second feature that determines the rate of growth is the degree of differentiation of the tumor. Now that is what is going to determine whether the tumor is benign or malignant and if it is malignant, what is the extent or differentiation of the malignancy. So rate of growth of malignant tumor is directly proportional to the degree of de-differentiation, which means the cells do not resemble the cell of origin as much. In benign tumor, they tend to resemble more with the cell of origin, while well-differentiated tumors also have some resemblance to the cell of origin, while highly malignant tumors do not resemble or have very little resemblance with the cells of origin and therefore that's what is called degree of de-differentiation. So rate of growth of malignant tumor therefore will depend upon the degree of de-differentiation or extent of resemblance with the cell of origin. Second is the variable growth of the uh, tumor cells uh, depends upon the speed at which they grow. So there are tumors which are slow growing while there are tumors which have a Sudden spurt, the slow growing tumors are benign tumors or well differentiated tumors, while malignant tumors sometimes they grow slowly, but all of a sudden they start having spurt of growth. They suddenly start proliferating rapidly, and then it becomes a poorly differentiated tumor. And sometimes there is cessation in the proliferation of the tumor cells, and then all of a sudden the tumor may appear somewhere else, which means the tumor cells are lost from the primary site, but they may start appearing at the metastatic site. And that's because at the primary site, the tumor cells have undergone necrosis. Or sometimes they may disappear spontaneously also because of the, there are rare examples of malignant tumors where the tumor may disappear spontaneously from the primary site uh, because of the good host immune response. So therefore, this feature depends upon the speed of the growth of the tumor cells. So rate of growth and variable growth pattern or speed of growth is the other feature which uh, determines the rate at which the tumor cells will proliferate and distinguish benign from malignant tumors. Now, how this difference in proliferation in different kinds of malignant tumors takes place is because of influence of variety of growth factors which are secreted in the body mainly fried by the tumor cells. Now these important growth factors involved in biology of uh, tumor growth include uh, some of the important growth factors like epidermal growth factor, fibroblast growth factor, platelet derived growth factor, colony stimulating factor, transforming growth factor beta, vascular endothelial growth factor, hepatocyte growth factor. These are some of the important ones which are involved in biology of tumor and we will discuss them in greater detail when we talk of molecular basis of neoplasia. Second characteristics of tumors is the cancer phenotype and stem cells. Now, phenotype means appearance and stem cells are the cells from which the the original cells from which the uh, daughter cells or progeny of the cells is formed. 
Now, the cancer cells proliferate more rapidly and that is because these cells do not obey the normal cycle of proliferation. They disobey the growth controlling signals in the body, which means cancer cells uh, do not uh, obey the normal physiologic process of growth and they are autonomous uh, in their growth. And that is because of the growth factors which go on them. So they proliferate rapidly because they do not uh, obey the growth controlling signals or regulatory controls. Secondly, the cancer cells escape death signals and therefore they get immortalized. So therefore, these cancer cells escape apoptosis and thus they become immortalized rather than counterbalance of proliferation and cell death. Instead, the growth fraction is towards growth rather than counterbalanced by cell death because these cells have escaped the uh, death signals. How they escape it again, we will talk in molecular basis of cancer. Uh, the cancer cells have excessive growth and that's because there is an imbalance between the proliferation and cell death and thus the uh, balance is in favor of proliferation which results in formation of the tumor mass. The cancer cells serve uh, no function or little function and that is because the cancer cells have lost their property of differentiation and that depends on the extent of loss of differentiation or degree of de-differentiation which means well differentiated tumors may continue to be functionally active. For example, the squamous cell carcinoma which is well differentiated will continue to form keratin while a poorly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma, keratin may not be visible on morphology. So therefore, it loses the function of forming the uh, keratin. And likewise, there may be abnormality in formation of mucin in high-grade tumors arising from the secretory epithelium. Then, the cancer cells are genetically unstable and develop newer, mutation, uh, newer mutations as the cancer cells grow. And that is because they lose the growth controls. And once they lose the growth control, they continue to proliferate and undergo more and more mutations. And therefore, rather than producing the progeny of the same type of cells with every cycle or every few cycle, there are newer mutations in the cell cycle as the cells grow in tumors and thus genetically unstable and newer mutations develop in the new progeny of the tumor cells. The cancer cells invade locally as well as to distant sites. Locally they spread the adjoining tissues and therefore cause damage and destruction in the neighboring tissues while cancer cells of higher grade will travel to distant sites from the site of origin and therefore, they can travel to other sites by the fluid and that fluid may be blood, lymph, which are more common and sometimes even the um, fluid, the body fluid like peritoneal cavity, the peritoneal fluid or pleural cavity, pleural fluid are the other routes of spread besides blood and lymph. Uh, and then the tumor cells in cancers arise from stem cells. Now that has been known for a long time for hematopoietic malignancies that tumor cells arising from stem cells uh, in the hematopoietic uh, stem cells lying in the bone marrow is the usual way hematopoietic malignancies develop. But these stem cells have now been described in other cancers as well. So therefore, there is a monoclonal proliferation of the tumor cells or single clone of abnormal cells being formed from the stem cells or cancer initiating cells which give rise to the next progeny of uh, abnormal cells or genetically unstable uh, tumor cells. The third and most important uh, feature of tumors